Mohammed is looking quite useful at the, at the top there. He's a first year under 23, third in the junior race last year. He's, he he uh, won a big cost country race in Milton Keynes. Uh, and he's also been running really well on the roads. He, he ran in the Great South Run 10 miles. Yeah, just as we just chatting about uh, Mohammed, in fact, it's Kripa who moves to the front and starts to put in a big burst. And he's really opened up that leading pack. We'll switch back to the leading pack in a moment. There we see Kripper in the space of about 200 metres. He's really broken apart that leading pack. This could be a very, very significant surge. Mohammed, we're talking about him. He's keeping track of movements in front of him. Diboni trying to cover the break. Gressier up there as well. Mayo. Hugo Hay coming through, so that's the top six now after that surge from Kripa. And around about that time that surge was developing, I saw one of the Belgians fall, the Belgian with the top knot, Sommers. So that's harmed their chances. He got up quite fairly quickly. So Kripa now leading the way. This is the man who was third in last year's race, but went on to win gold on the track over 5,000 metres. Has a very, very good sprint finish, but he's taking this from a long way out now. Just over 1,500 metres to go. He's coming into the last of the long laps. So very shortly we'll hear the bell. Mayo, I don't know, just starting to look a little bit tired. Gripper looking quite relaxed at the front there. Somewhat awkward running style with very hunched shoulders. And you just heard the bell. Almost exactly 20 minutes on the clock. L.A. Hugo, well, that's for Hugo Hay, the Frenchman, who's back in about sixth place at the moment. So it's Kripper, Mayo, Gressier, Deboni, Mohamed. That's the top five. Hugo Hay from France in six. Another Frenchman. Rudolf Levis in seven. Miele in eighth. I think that means France are now top of the tree as far as the team standings are concerned. Well, after, frankly, a little bit of jostling and a very, very relaxed first six kilometers it's now really starting to hot up and Kripper is really making a long search from home Gressier looking calm behind him he's looking in good shape Mayo well normally don't see his head bobbling from side to side until the last two or three hundred meters I think Mayo's quite tired here Deboni is following him hey Mohammed just slipping back now into sixth place and that last lap forged by Kripper, 4.22. Much the fastest lap we've seen in any of the races here. And that's why what was a pack is now being strung out. They're fighting to stay in touch with him. Yeah, that's right, it's Kripper now. Well, he hasn't shaken off definitively the rest of the chasers. Just about five metres between him and Jimmy Gressier. Gressier, well, made a meal of clearing that hurdle, even though it was only a small obstacle. Mayo now charting to try and come back at the two men in front of him. Pulling away from Rudo Flavis and Hay. But it's still Italy, Belgium and Spain. That's the one, two, three at the moment. So Gripper really starting to work hard up front. Gressier now starting to look somewhat pained his expression, but he's still looking very strong. Face is giving it away though. Mayo de Bonny has now closed up again on Mayo. Mayo tried to briefly close the gap between him and Self and Gressier, but de Bonny and Rudolf Levis now just following in his footsteps. In fact, it's Hay. Got the Frenchman confused, it's the Hay. So we're now looking at Italy, France, and France. That's the one, two, and three, Belgium and Spain. And Rudolf Levis in sixth place, so three Frenchmen in the top six at the moment. But this race is being led by Italy's Yamani behind Kripa. Well, he said he hoped he could produce a last lap like he did on the track in Bidgosh. Well, the last laps here are 1,500 metres, somewhat longer. But and now Gressier is getting right up on his shoulder. I was going to say, we know Gressier can kick as well because when France won the team the junior team title, it was his placing when he outkicked people in the straight, which got those vital points. So we know he, he has a fast finish too. Hay just tracking the pair of them. Hay's broken away from 
the two men in front of him to get up on almost on the shoulder of Gracia and Gripper. Now this is going to be a very enthralling race over the last 500 meters. Well, Kripper now just starting to show the effects of his long run from home. You saw the grimace on his face there. Now they have a sharp turn onto the sand. This is where where it can really sap your energy. We're just a few, couple of hundred meters from home now. But it's still Yamani behind Kripper leading the way. Gressier of France. Jimmy Gressier, fourth of the last two European Under 20 Championships, now taking the lead, getting past Yamani behind Kripper. And Hugo Hay in third place at the moment. So we've got three men coming into the final 100 meters. We've got one turn left. Now Gressier is making his move. He's really working hard. 70 meters to go now for Gressier of France, followed by Hay, his compatriot. Gripper now slipping back. Gripper out of contention as Jimmy Gressier comes through to take the goal for France. Hugo Hay is already starting to celebrate a delighted silver medalist, but gold goes to Jimmy Gressier of France. Silver to Hugo Hay, the exhausted 20-year-old Frenchman. Giovanni Bahan Ripper taking the bronze as the rest of the leading runners stream in. Rudolf Levis coming up well to take fourth place for France. That's as good as confirmed that the French take the team title. Second for the last two years, well, Carlos Mayer has to settle for fifth this time. Simon de Boyne from Belgium in sixth as we look at the remaining leading runners. Well, Mohamed Mohamed slipped back to 12th place after showing well in the penultimate lap. But celebrations between the French team. That was Melit coming down, long way down, but Alexis Melit, 22 years of age, will almost certainly be standing subject to confirmation on top of the podium with France taking the team title. Well, for my money, that was probably the most enthralling race of the day, but we've still got three more races to come, the two senior races and concluding this fascinating program, the first ever mixed relay. What's your thoughts on that race, Mark? Well, I wonder if uh, Cripper might regret pushing so hard on the penultimate lap because we we knew he had the finishing speed. Everybody in this race knew he had the finishing speed. He didn't want to leave it to that. Perhaps he was well aware of uh, what Jimmy Gresham might unleash on the last lap, but he couldn't get away. And I'm very pleased for France. I think I'd concur with that. I think that was a tactical error by Cripper, but nevertheless, he'll be standing on the podium and you know this is still very very early stages in their career it'll be very interesting to see how they develop as athletes and of course next year we do move on to the berlin 2018 european athletics championships part of the inaugural multi-sport european championships which takes on seven sports i think we're going to be seeing some of these leading under 23 athletes dueling again over 5,000 meters confirmation of the standings Goal goes to Jimmy Gressier of France. 24.35 for that race, just over eight kilometers. Silver, and a surprise silver, I have to say, but a very well-deserved one to Francis Hugo Hay. And bronze to Italy's Yamani Bahan Kripper. Well, Gressier has been working hard over the previous kilometer to try and get away from Fitway, but Fitway still hanging on in there. Well, I think that's Gilles in third, just getting away from Forsyth and his compatriot. Yes, it is Gilles He's looking as though he's working hard last year's under-20 bronze medalist. Well, they whizzed through a bit quickly, but certainly confirmation that France are currently leading the team standings. Fitway getting urged on by German fans who haven't had to come very far to come to Tilburg. Just a few kilometers down the road. And it's looking, Phil, as if Britain are equally clear in second place. 
Uh, the battle seemed to be for the bronze between Spain and Belgium at this stage. Well, it's now looking as though Gressier is starting to put quite a few meters between himself and Fitwe. Gressier now moving slightly higher tempo than his German rival, that's for sure. Yes, you can see there it's probably about 20, 25 meters between Gressier and Fitwe now. Fitwe just starting to look a little bit tired. Gressier full of running. We've still got roughly about nine minutes left in this race. Gressier looking as though he's well on his way to defending his title. Not the first man to defend his title, though, in the under-23 ranks. No. But Have I, I caught you out there? Uh, well, I was, well, I was going to remark on, as I, as, I, as I frantically look up who you're referring to, uh, I was going to ref praise Jimmy Gressier for the guts that he's shown, really, because we know he's got a finishing kick. We saw that last year when he outkicked Cripper, but he hasn't relied on that, and he's made it as hard as possible for anybody else to beat him. Yes, people with reasonable memories will remember that uh, going into the last lap and for a large part of the second half of the race, Yamani Bahan Kripa from Italy, who we've mentioned will be in the senior race, was leading the way and pushing the pace. And as Mark rightly remembers, Gressier over the final 200 metres pulled away. Kripa started to struggle very badly and then Hugo Hay came through for the silver medal for a, a very... Very delighted 1-2 for France. So Gressier braving the elements here in this very, very wet Spa European Cross Country Championships. The 25th edition of this outstanding continental championship, which has really made its mark on the international calendar. Started out back in 1994 with two races, just the senior races. The junior races came in, and then the under-23 races, and now we have the mixed relay. Confirmation of the top five with just over a kilometre to go. Well, Gressier, if he can hold his form, looking well on his way to defending his title. Samuel Fitwe making his international debut, and looks as though it's going to be one which sees him with a medal hung around his neck. But the bronze medal, I think, is still very much up for grabs as we scan back down the course. Well, the gap isn't growing between Gressier and Fitwe. Fitwe looking as though he's getting a second win. Gressier just gritting his teeth. And that lap was 4.13, his last lap. So he's maintaining, as you said, the, the, temp the tempo. Uh, Fitwe's fallen back. And to answer your previous question, nobody has defended this title successfully. So the first man in 13 years to win back-to-back -back titles, if he can maintain this pace, Jimmy Gressier of France. I'm sure these conditions really appeal to him. He will have raced in these sort of conditions in some of those cross-country meetings in northern France in particular. This won't be unfamiliar to him. Samuel Fitwe, well, Darmstadt, I think, was pretty muddy a few weeks ago as well. And they're really showing their class in these quite challenging conditions, and I'm being very diplomatic. Yeah, we were saying earlier we didn't quite get a definitive answer. The muddiest championships since when? I remember Charleroi, which isn't far from here, obviously, in Belgium. And, uh, and how John... Uh, sorry, Arias in Portugal, Charleroi also. And how John Brown won that year, because none of us could walk quickly on the mud, but he managed to skip through it. Yes, you've been to every one of the Spa European Cross Country Championships. I'm a bit shy of that. I've only been to 17 of the 25. As Gressier now turns the corner. Just a couple of hundred meters to run. And he's urging the crowd to cheer him through to the finish. Well, this has been a truly magnificent run from this young Frenchman. Oh, no! 
and watch out for a football style <laughs> celebration at the finish. You remember that last year? Yes, I do now that you reminded me. Yes, you're absolutely right. Well, he's starting to celebrate already. I think he's looking for a French flag. There we go. Is he going to cut? Yes, that's it. <laughs> Well, he can afford to do that. Two French flags. Yes, quite wisely looking behind. But with 50 metres to go, it's Jimmy Gressier about to successfully defend his men's under-23 title here. For the second year running, sliding his way. I'm not sure whether that was intended or not, but he does cross the line. And Jimmy Gressier, for the second year running, is the men's under-23 champion here at the Spa European Cross Country Championships. Big hug from the silver medalist from Germany, Samuel Fitwe, who really did his utmost. Hugo Hay got the bronze. Gressier cheering through his compatriots. That's Fabien Palcao in seventh place. Louis Gilbert, at one point he was in the bronze medal position, slipping back to ninth. Top ten completed by Adrian Ben of Spain. Leading Dutch runner. We saw him at the start of this race. Stan Nielsen doing very well. Eleventh place. But once again... The European men's under-23 champion is this young man with the baseball cap, Jimmy Gressier. I think he was going to go for a knee slide. But it didn't and quite, it all went it, horribly it, it, wrong. It, it didn't <laughs> slide, did it? <laughs> I hope he's got a sense of humour. <laughs> A rather undignified end to the defence of his title, but nevertheless, a gold medal winning effort, I think is the best way of saying. What a pity, because that would have been a great picture with the French flags as well and the hat and everything. Yes, I wonder what over the course of the next few minutes people are going to say to him. They're not going to begrudge him a gold medal, but there we see the Hugo Hay fan club. Hay coming through for the bronze medal, another outstanding run having to settle for a second best in the French team standings, but nevertheless on the individual podium again, and France will take the team golds. We're waiting for confirmation, but I think it's as good as certain that France have got the gold medals. And both men's titles so far today have been won by defending champions. Well, we have another 2017 champion coming up in the senior men's race. Khan Keegan Osbilan. Wonder if he can make it a trio of defences amongst the men. He's not having the best of no. luck, is he? I mean, no. He can't get his flag to stick in. Rather undignified end, but nevertheless, the gold medal does come to France in the form of Jimmy Gressier once again. Fitway, Germany, Hay. France, that's the silver and bronze medal. It's Ryan Forsyth, outstanding run from the Irishman, just missing out on the medals. And Patrick Deva coming through very well on that last lap to take fifth place. It's difficult to tell with the way that the camera angle changes, but you just get the feeling that Bibic has surged again and just put a bit more effort in. And for the first time, I think, in three championships, I don't think Jimmy Gressier looks quite as comfortable as he has done in the past. I think, I think it's very rare for someone to look comfortable, comfortable on this course. I mean, Bibic is making it look like it's flat, and I can assure you it's not. He's got a slightly unusual running style as Bibic. I mean, he's got this loping... It, it, it's almost a languid running style. I mean, I can think of a few Kenyans who have this running style, but some of the taller Kenyans. I mean, I'm showing my age here, but I can remember John and Googie running a bit like Elvin Bibic. It's not the most perhaps conventional of running styles, but it seems to work. 
No, he seems utterly unaffected by the by the undulation. He looks exactly the same. And oh, we've just got Chipinelli is is starting to work his way through here. You can see he's coming up to Mohammed Mohammed, and uh, he, he, you know, it'd be it'd be great to get lap by lap individual lap splits. But I think he could really be moving through. Well, that last lap, uh, as you mentioned, that uh, panel was 4.31. Previously, it was 4.26, so slightly slower, though I agree with feel, I think, towards the end of the lap. So. Yeah, so I think well, it's difficult to tell for us, and I'm sure it's difficult to tell at home, but I get the feeling that Bibic is throwing in every so often a, a, a change of pace, a surge, and I, I don't think Gressier is used to that at this level. France at the moment, as we were expecting, they're the favourites. They've also been the past two-time team champions. 19 points to France at this stage. Well, still two long laps to go, though. That, that split came just a short while ago, so they, they're well embarked, embarked on the penultimate lap here. And it's still Elvin Bibic and Uke Halfen of Spain doggedly hanging on there in the bronze medal position. He's slipped back a bit, but he's not letting the gap go any while wider. And he's managing to indeed close the gap on that downhill stretch. And Gresse has made no effort at all to get past Bibic. I, th I think, yeah, I mean, I, to me, he looks comfortable. He doesn't look like he's hanging on like, like the Spanish like the Spanish athlete. He he looks like he's pretty happy to settle there, and he's just being patient. And I think we might see we might see a big move from him coming up. I, I think that's probably a good assessment of things. A minute or two ago, he did look as though he was just briefly having a bit of bit of trouble, but he does look slightly more relaxed now. He's just blowing a bit less harder, and maybe it's just because Bibic has actually just eased off the pace as well. But as you rightly say, I mean, Bibic has got a great range. He's a 339, 1500-metre runner. I've got a feeling with... And he competes a lot indoors as well. I think we'll probably see him uh, competing on the indoor circuit, both at IAAF and European Indoor Permit Meetings during the course of February coming up. I think it might be interesting in these, in this sort of, not quite the, the last stage, the last lap, but in this intermediate period now, these guys start to watch each other a little bit too much and it might open the door for some of these guys to get back involved in the medals. Well, actually, as you say that, a moment or two ago, a minute ago, and here we see Gressier get rounding Bibic. I'm wondering if this is going to be the decisive surge. Suddenly Bibic just looks a little bit tireder as Gressier now starts to pull away and then a big gap between Bibic and Hukelfen of Spain starting to appear between the current silver and bronze medalists. This could well be a very decisive surge. Well, we've still got about six minutes of running, about two kilometres of running to go. See, look at that leg speed on that downhill, and that's that's cross country specialism for you. Uh, that, that takes that takes a lot of effort to to have that technique and a lot of practice. And uh, perhaps he's, he knew he was playing to his strength. And we'll see another severe downhill now here, and uh, the chance to take you know four, five, six seconds out of your competitors on a technical part like that could be could be game changing. Anu Kalfen now starting to also look a bit tired. Well, Mohammed Mohammed behind him, and we're not quite sure, but we think Mohammed Mohammed still in in fourth place we're looking around the course here because we're a little bit unsighted here places as jimmy gressier comes through hits the bell in 1927 unofficially time's not being so important of course at cross country although that last lap was seven, uh, eight seconds quicker than the previous lap and i think whatever happens Bibic has, has run brilliantly because don't forget he's at the bottom of the age group so he's got two more years in this category whereas gressier um this has been his last year as it under 23. Well, this has been the point in the three previous races with perhaps a uh, kilometre to go. Well, of course, Inge Britson, it was about two kilometres to go. Battercletti, a little bit under a kilometre. But it's now starting to look as though it could well be France coming through and Jimmy Gressier coming through. Well, Mohamed Mohamed... I'm not. That's not right. <laughs> They've missed the first. Just ignore missed that. the first three yes. there. That's that's. It should be fourth place for Chipinelli. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. You sometimes start second guessing yourself and wondering whether your your eyes are deceiving yourself. As we were watching Jimmy Gressier there, and they're there. This is wonderful organisation, but there's been a few timing and results issues here, which we'll try and unravel for you as the afternoon progresses. We are now. Almost halfway into proceedings here at these 2019 Spa European Cross Country Championships as Jimmy Gressier starting to look really as though he's on his way, well on his way to his third European Cross Country title in the under-23 ranks. 
Well, Gracier, he's won on all sorts of different surfaces as well. He won in very dry but bitingly cold conditions in Slovakia in Samarin back in 2017. Last year, of course, uh, he became a social media sensation with his slightly misconstrued finish line celebrations when he tried to go through on his knees and ended up with the tape around his neck. Fortunately, didn't garrot himself, but... Let's hope he has a, a, ch a chance to do something a little bit slicker in a few minutes. And he was also holding uh, the flag, the French flag, somebody <laughs> yeah. handed it to him, so I wonder if... It just all went horribly wrong. Somebody standing <laughs> by to do that again. Ignore the team standings for the moment. We do know that France at the moment, uh, subject to confirmation, are well in the lead in the team standings. Yeah. I mean, but he's kept his sense of humour. I chatted to him briefly in Sweden prior to the European Under-23 Championships, and, uh, and he had a big grin on his face. And, I, and he always promises now that he's going to do something different to celebrate wins in Yevla. He had his arms outstretched. He was doing his French Air Force impression. I wonder if he's got anything up his sleeve here, but I think he's probably going to be rather too tired to do anything too extravagant. Well, I mean, the, are the French Air Force back off their strike? Because they <laughs> can't do that today if, uh, yeah, if that's not in action. Well, certainly no strike action from Jimmy Gressier. He's really put in a full day's work here. As Gressier, just a, in the last kilometre, he's just put so much distance. I mean, I'm trying to roughly guesstimate the distance between himself and Elvin Bibic in the silver medal position. And I make it about 15 seconds at the moment, and the gap is just extending and extending. Gressier, in the last kilometre, has basically put about 100 metres between himself and the man who's run very, very well in the silver medal position, Serbia's Elvan Bibic. Well, we're focusing our attention on Gressier, but I'm sure behind Gressier, a long way back, there's a big battle going on for the silver and gold medal positions. So, Jimmy Gressier, is Chapanelli in there somewhere? Well, we'll no, bring you up to date with that. But, <laughs> yeah, but we'll focus on what we see in front of our eyes. So, it's Elvan Bibic, the Serbian. He's about 100 metres behind Jimmy Gressier at the moment, is Bibic, though. I think now he's mentally probably settled for the silver medal. Luke Helfen, well, he's got detached now, but he's still holding his form, and he's still in the bronze medal position. Luke Helfen, the Spaniard, set to match his European under-23 10,000-metre title. So he's starting to acknowledge the crowd. He's coming into the home straight. He's just coming round into the home straight now. He can see the finish line. There we get it. There's the French, French Air Force celebrations. Perhaps not quite as extravagant as the ones in Yevla, but Jimmy Gressier, for the third time, is the Spa European cross-country championships under 23 gold medalist well and he cheekily just eases up and walks across the line no sliding no heroics just puts his finger to his lips he's the boss Elvin Bibic just runs straight past him he couldn't do that out on the course but 10 meters beyond the finish line Elvin Bibic of Serbia takes a well-earned silver medal the new Calfan of Spain completes the standings so we're seeing Getahon of Israel in fourth being closed down very quickly by Johannes Ciappanelli of Italy these are the men just out of the medals but it's going to be Getahon of Israel in fourth Ciappanelli fifth Palcao of France in sixth first Britain through in eighth place I think that was Mohamed Mohamed after just slipping back after holding fourth place for so long in that race <coughs> well, I think uh, for any aspiring young cross-country runners out there, Jimmy Gressier has put on a masterclass there. I think he could do very well to emulate uh, his tactics, his, his technique on the challenging terrain there. Well, we'll bring you confirmation of standings. We, but uh, no doubt at all about the winner. And for the third time after winning in Slovakia, then in the Netherlands, well, he's been in Central and... Eastern Europe, he's been in Northern Europe, and now he's come to Southern Europe, to Lisbon. And for the third time, he's the European under-23 champion. Big smiles from Jimmy Gressier, once again, the winner of the gold medal. Quick hug there from one of his teammates, the French. I think he probably knows by now he's going to be standing on the podium 
not just for the fifth time but the sixth time as well I'm fairly sure subject to confirmation we always add in that caveat that France will be taking the team title for the third successive year as we just take a pause and watch the highlights of the race and Jimmy Gressier taking his third European cross country title the silver medal and that was a tight fight but Germany jumps to the bronze medal in this under 23 men's race Depois de nos Países Baixos ano passado a França ter ganho aqui em Portugal em Lisboa a França volta a garantir o ouro nesta classificação por equipas segundo lugar para Itália que assim Que grande corrida por parte de Jimmy Gessier. No primeiro momento ocupares o grupo da frente. O segundo lugar foi a fim dominando ao longo dos mais... Jimmy Gessier, once again, taking gold medal at these championships. And there's confirm confirmation. Gessier, well... Walking across the line, closed the gap to eight seconds. At one point, it was about 15 between Gressier and the silver medalist Bibic. Ukelfen, Abdesamad Ukelfen of Spain taking the bronze medal. The race in the middle settings, and he also leads the French team to get another gold medal in this under 23 race.